Hi everyone and welcome back to another Mixed Media Tuesday. Today I'm going for a really fun and colorful page and for that I will be playing with new stamps by Art by Marilyn. You already know that I love her style. These are really kind of essentials for art journaling since they come with lots and lots of circles with doodling that can be used either for the background to create texture or even as flowers and I'm going to show you both ways today. Also for my quote I'm going to try the new Rabbons by Art by Marlene. There are two pages included in that set and you will find that five of the pages give you different alphabets, capital and small letters that you can put together your own sentiment using those and you will also find a page that already has uh, ready-made uh, quotes for you and I will work with that one on my page today. But for now let's take a look at this art journal. Now this is probably the most beautiful art journal out there. It even has elastic in rainbow order as well as a rubber band all around to keep the book together that is a rainbow. Now on the inside you will find five different booklets, again following the rainbow order. The first one is just a notebook with lines, but the four next booklets are perfect for your art journal needs since it, they come with a really thick watercolor paper, so they take any type of medium really great. Since this art journal has that system with the elastics, you can easily take out the booklets or put them back. I like that because you can take out just one booklet, you work on it without being too bulky, and then you can easily put it back together. Now for the first booklet with the lines, I will probably use it to sketch my ideas or keep notes. And for the four next ones, you can even go and create a themed journal. So for example, on the first one, I can have something bright and colorful. On the second one, I can go with steampunk ideas. On the third one, I can have a collection of vintage ones. But again, you don't have to follow any rules. You can just be creative on your booklets. So today I'm going to play on the orange booklet and I'm going to create the first page. Now if you are wondering, these are pages that are 8 and a quarter by 11 and a quarter, four of them, that they are folded and stitched in the middle. So this isn't bulky at all. Since I'm working on the first page and I don't want to make a mess on the cover, on the front flap, I'm going to use some masking tape to make sure that I keep everything nice and neat. Although it doesn't really matter if you end up being messy on your own art journal. Now in an art journal page there are many ways to add dimension. You can go with stencils but you can also go with die cuts. You can cut them out and stick them on your page before applying any color and you will find a wonderful texture at the end. This is what I was thinking to do here but you will find that I'm going to change my mind later on. So I did cut out this shape twice and I was thinking that it would make a great border on each side of my page. And this is definitely a way to use them. You can cut them out from colored cardstock and stick them at the end of your page to kind of frame it or stick them down beforehand so that you can add texture. But as I saw these uh, designs, I thought they would look great as clouds. So finally I decided to keep them aside and I can use them later on on my composition. So for the background I'm starting with uh, sprays and I want to have a bright and colorful page today so I'm staying away from oxides. I will play with a bright blue and a bright uh, green and since I'm going to create a mess with sprays I'm just using a silicone mat in between the rest of the pages to avoid mess. I'm starting with Vibrant Turquoise and this is from the Dilutions line. I know that these sprays stay nice and vibrant. And then the green one is uh, Fresh Lime, again a lovely green bright color. Just with the brush I'm helping those two colors blend together where they meet. I don't want to blend them too much. A couple of years ago I wasn't using sprays at all. I was avoiding them at all costs. I thought that they were so messy. And for something like that, I would probably use my watercolors. However, after starting using them, I cannot go back. I find them a really quick and simple way to create lovely backgrounds that they don't look flat. But remember, you can have similar results if you just use your watercolors. I am going to do some stenciling. I like to use uh, stencils that have many different designs so that you can play along with them. These are very versatile and when you are buying a stencil, it is always nice to get something versatile that you can use again and again in different projects. 
And of course, there are so many different ways to play with a stencil on a page. You can go over the stencil with your sprays. I'm not introducing any new color. I don't like to do that as they turn out very busy at the end. So again, I'm using my turquoise color that I used in the beginning. Another way to use your stencil is uh, to go over it with embossing paste. You can go with water on top of it to have that costing effect. And I'm doing some of that here. Just playing along with different ideas so that I can create kind of an interesting background that has some visual texture but at the same time it doesn't look very busy. I am also doing my white splashes. This is gesso thinned down with water. And of course I'm stamping. This time I'm going with uh, the stamp set that has lots and lots of tiny little circles and dots. I'm not introducing again any new color for the background. If you notice, the ink that I'm using is an archival ink and the color is Paradise Teal, which I found that it matched perfectly the blue color on my sky. When I'm doing the stamping for the background, I'm never going for the perfect impression. Notice that I'm stamping with my fingers and I'm using just a part of the stamp. It doesn't have to be the whole thing. I am bringing in the stamp set and you can see those three lines. These can be used as stems for flowers or they can be used for borders. I'm using one of them as a border and I'm going to emboss it with white embossing powder on a couple of my corners. For that I'm going to use embossing ink, stamp them wherever I need them to go and it doesn't have to be the perfect embossing. This is not a card when we are creating a mixed media project. It's always nice if we have some particles here and there. It is going to add more texture on the finished project. So after applying my white embossing powder, I'm using my heat gun to set it. And the moment you heat set it, as the powder melts, you will see that it gets more vibrant. And you can see that white uh, border even better. And this is where I'm super happy with how the background looks as it is. So I'm going to peel off the masking tape. And here is a close-up look of how it looks at the moment. Now let's create the focal points. I want to have bright whimsical flowers for my page. So I will work with this one nice and big as a focal point. And I'm also going to combine a few smaller ones from this other stamp set. You can even use circles as your flowers. And I'm going to do that today. I always tend to stamp my focal points on a separate piece of paper, color them, cut them out and then stick them on my page. This gives me the freedom of deciding where I want all the elements to go. I can play around, audition them and see what looks best. But you don't always have to do that. You can always stamp directly on top of your page and color it in. Of course, you will have to somehow overlap the layers that are underneath, but that's not difficult. You can always go with gesso, you can use your acrylic markers and color on top of your background. Many, many different ways. I just like to do it this way. I like to stamp everything separately, color them, and now for coloring I am going with these brushes. These are watercolor brushes. There are many different brands. I have some from Novo and I have some from Altenew. I'm going to mix and match them today. You can go directly with the brush and your watercolors. I like this technique because it doesn't cover up the, the black lines of the design, since watercolor is actually transparent. Since I was planning to do watercoloring on these flowers, I did stamp them with archival ink that is not going to smudge and smear, and uh, I did use a watercolor paper, so now I can easily blend those colors together. I can even add more water if I need to, to help them blend better. And since I want to avoid flat color on the different areas of the design, I'm mixing different markers so that I can have lighter and uh, darker areas. And since I'm going for a very happy and colorful layout today, I did use bright colors. And once I had everything ready, I did use my scissors to cut them out. And here I have all my elements ready to go. I did cut out those white leaves, but I'm not going to use them after all. So here are the shapes that I was planning to use as borders. Instead, I'm using them as uh, clouds here. I am going to keep them white as I like the contrast and how bright and uh, white they are up at the sky. And for sticking everything down, I'm just using my white glue. Make sure to don't make a mess with glue or matte medium since the pack is going to react with anything that you add on top. Just keep in mind that those sprays aren't permanent. 
Before I stick everything down, I play with the elements, I just change positions, try to decide where I want them to live on my page, and once I'm happy with the outline, I'm going to stick them down. Now for the stems, I'm going to use one of the long lines. I will repeat the same stem for all my flowers, but of course you have the option to use three different ones in this stamp set, or you can always draw your own. Another way to go with stems is to cut out thin strips of uh, paper and just stick them down as stems. Now this isn't long enough, but I can always stamp one more time and extend it as much as I want to. And if those lines don't perfectly match, it's not a big deal, this is just a layout inside my art journal, and of course only for having fun. This is a very versatile design, you can uh, make it smaller and turn it into a card, you can make it bigger and turn it into a canvas or a wooden panel, you can even make it into a shadow box if you add some uh, dimension on the flowers. It's already spring here, the weather is nice and warm and I wanted to play with flowers and lots of color, so this makes me happy. You can always have your uh, flowers on an angle, you can stick the stem like that if you wish to give some movement. I decided to go completely straight with all the designs. Now I'm going to use my white gel pen, I'm going to add some highlights on the flowers, the petals, I will also add some dots here and there. It's just something that I always like to do. I'm also going to use this black pen to add some details on that flower. That flower does have the details on the stamp, but I did cut them out when I was fuzzy cutting, so I'm just going to draw them with my pen. On the left side of the page, I do have enough space to add a quote. This is something that I always like to do on my pages, have a motivational quote. And since I have those Art by Marlene Rabons, I'm going to use them since they are a new product to me. You can mix and match alphabet letters to create your quote. However, I'm going to use one quote from the page that has ready-made quotes for you to use. What I like to do with Rabons is to cut out with scissors the one that I want to work with, then peel off the backing, and I'm going to put them in place. Now you need to put some pressure on the letters to stick on top of your page. For that I'm just going to use something that I have on my stash. This is a stylus, the one that has that ball at the tip. But of course you can use the back of a brush or even the back of a pen. Anything works really, they are really easy. And once I peel off the backing, you see that they are nicely stuck there. And of course, because I cannot stay away from my white gel pen, I'm going to add some highlights around the letters as well. Just a touch of white here and there is going to bring it more to life. I'm also going to outline one of the words. And you can keep on adding more details. For example, you can have birds at the sky or even a butterfly. I'm going to add some dots with my Nouveau Drops. And I'm going to call this page done. It's an easy layout, perfect for beginners, and you will have lots of fun making it. Just like always, you will find down below a full list of all the supplies that I used. Here are some close-up photos where you can see all the details better. I hope that you had fun today, that you got inspired. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you all next time.